Peter Salter is a prominent British architect and a professor in some of the best universities in Britain. He once studied Diploma at Architectural Association before working there as a tutor for 13 years. His teaching career also includes lecturing at three other universities, UEL, University of Bath and currently in Cardiff University. He was awarded the Annie Spink Award by the Royal Institute of British Architects for its outstanding contribution to architectural education. Apart from that, he worked for Alison and Peter Smithson, who were some of the most influential and controversial British architects of the mid-20th century. Sartre also began collaborating with Christopher MacDonald during his academic career in AA and multiple projects in Japan. Peter Salter is very famous for his drawings. The majority of them are complex, peculiar, and unconventional. Even though the drawings of his designs were worthy of note, quite a number of them were not built. His unconventional designs did not quite suit the modernism movement, which was the typical British architectural style. Throughout Salter's education and career, he had developed his architectural vocabulary and further understood the interactions between details, scale, strategy, and materials. Hence, this allows the fabrication of remarkable architectural character under his influence. Salto's work in Japan first started with an invitation from Aracha Izozaki, along with Christopher MacDonald. Salto undertook the Osaka Foley project to contribute to the Garden and Green Area Exposition in the year 1990. As time passed, Sauter continued his adventure in Japan and had a sequence of works completed there. Sauter's project there shared a number of similar styles and characteristics. By comparing the following buildings, one could make out Sauter's architectural style. They are Osaka Foley, Inami Woodcarving Museum and Kamiichi Mountain Pavilion. One of the recurring characteristics visible after analysis is Salter's liking towards the three materials, copper, timber, and bamboo. This is possibly due to the influence of Japanese culture where they have a close relationship with their surroundings. The repeated use of renewed or second-hand timber was noted in the Inami Wood Carving Museum and Kamiichi Mountain Pavilion. The same could be said for the use of copper, such as copper water storage tanks in the pavilion and copper roofing on the museum. Bamboo railings were seen both at the Osaka Folly and the Mountain Pavilion as well. Besides that, Sato took external factors seriously. One example of this is light. The entrance of light influences the design of the buildings. According to Sato, Daylight should either enter low through the shoji screens or high above through the timber frames. Rain and snowfall were considered as well during his design of the Kamiichi Mountain Pavilion. For instance, snowfall runoff is delayed through a series of pipes so that the melted snow would be dripping out from the external pipes as water and into the river. Sato's creations have always had a strong sense of presence in relation to the sites. Of Salter's masterpieces, the design that stands out the best is arguably the Kamiichi Mountain Pavilion, completed in the year 1994. Situated on a hill in Toyoma Prefecture, the pavilion offers coolness and shade to travelers during the summer. Visitors would reach the pavilion through a path along the river. After entering the pavilion, a twisting and turning circulation encourages visitors to understand the surrounding nature overlooking the northern Japanese Alps. Salter started his design of the pavilion with a series of sections, conceptual models, paper cutouts, and watercolor drawings. Salter believed that the presence of material could provide details that determine the quality of space. Therefore, his selection of materials are closely linked to this belief that form of his design follow its functions. Copper, bamboo and timber not only function particularly well for the mountain pavilion, but they exude a sense of Japanese tradition and culture as well. The building is a response to extreme winter conditions. 
permanently withstanding a formidably high level of snow. The initial stage of the design process included the experimentation of the outer shell of the pavilion such that it can collect and transfer melting snow. The outer shell also functions like a boat. Instead of water, the outer shell withstands the compression force from the snow building up. Roofing was originally planned to be made of steel, but the presence of snow would encourage corrosion, therefore sought to opt for copper instead, as iron is prone to oxidation. Without electricity, water is brought in by a gutter and assessed by a hand pump. Lighting is also natural, following the lighting rule by Sauter. During winter, when the pavilion is not used, the samurai helmet-like silhouette of the pavilion harmonizes perfectly with snow-clad hill. The same applies to the pavilion's color and camouflage that gives it indigenous appearance. Therefore, Sauter's mountain pavilion is designed so that its impact on the environment is minimized as much as possible. Compared to contemporary architecture, it is easy to see parts that stand out in Sauter's work. The unconventional approach by Sauter clearly contradicts the modern architecture, and this might be a reason for the small number of built designs. His works are crafty, but also down-to-earth when compared to the likes of Zaha Hadid, who is known for bold futuristic styles. Another important point is the form follows function principle applied by Sauter, preferring to allow the surrounding factors and functions of a building to shape its form. While new modern materials are being introduced into the market each day, Sauter prefers to revert to natural materials that fit well with purpose and the local culture, at the same time minimizing environmental impact. In conclusion, Peter Sauter is an architect and professor with a unique style. His style is not all about uniqueness, but it is also rooted strongly onto the design principle of form follows function, together with the local cultural attributes. For Sauter, the building not only has to look good, but it should also include certain characteristics, such as the manipulation of light, usage of natural materials, unique circulation, and considerations about natural factors. All these can be seen in his works in Japan, especially in the Kamiichi Mountain Pavilion, where such styles stand out most. Despite having only a few of Sauter's designs actually being built, the ones that were constructed are special works of art that undoubtedly stand out in the architectural world and into the Hall of Fame.